So uh, again, good morning. Uh, today's session is going to be an ECG EKG. Um, we're going to uh, the learning objectives um, are uh, we're going to use uh, show you how to use the the e EKG to diagnose a heart attack. So a heart attack is a myocardial infarction. Uh, use the EKG to diagnose myocardial ischemia, where ischemia is decreased blood flow to the to the heart muscle, and then arrhythmia, which is abnormal rhythm. Electrolyte abnormalities such as uh, low potassium, a high potassium, a higher or low calcium. We can also use the EKG to determine the size of the cardiac chambers, the a the, atri the, the atrium, and the ventricles. Um, we can use it to to look at the heart rate, and if the heart rate is too low a very low heart rate, we call bradycardia, then it will give us an, an indication the patient needs a pacemaker, yes or, uh, or no. Um, and then for drug toxicity, we can use the EKG to determine if, uh, you know, if you're taking whatever medication you're taking, if you're taking too much. So when we talk about EKG, ECG, what, what we're really talking about is the electrical activity of the heart. As we pointed out, the, the heart has a pumping function, and the pumping function is because of uh, uh, an intact electrical uh, system in the heart. So we can look at the electrical activity, and that is called the, the EKG or ECG, okay? And again, we can make certain diagnosis by just looking at the EKG, we can make certain diagnosis and we went over most of them, all right? So when we do our EKG, what we are, we, we put electrodes uh, on the, 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 the outer surface of the, the, the skin. We, as we put it in the chest where the, the, the heart is located and we put it on the limbs as well. Okay, so these are electrodes, little sticky stuff, and we attach it to the, the surface of the skin. We talk about a 12 lead ECG, um, where we get 12 different electrical signals. Okay, we only put on 10 leads, but we get 12 electrical signals, and we're going to look at those. So all of you guys are exposed to EKG, so you know what we're talking about. We're going to put these electrodes at different positions, and you have to know the correct position to put your, um, your, your, your electrodes. So we're going to put um, electrodes on the right arm, and when we say right arm, you can put it... Uh, on the forearm, or you can put it um, in the shoulder area, and we'll show you, uh, give you a picture of uh, how you can do this. You're also gonna put an electrode on the left arm, and similarly, you can put it on the forearm or the, the, the uh, shoulder. The right leg, so you can put this on the right leg itself, or you can put it uh, right in the, the groin area, the right. Uh, groin or lower abdominal area. And then left leg, similarly, you can put it on the left leg or the left groin or lower abdominal area. So these are what we call limb leads, limb leads, because they're on the limbs. You know, the right arm, the left arm, the right leg and the left leg, these are limb leads. Now, you, 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 you have the chest leads. And there are six chest leads. So there are four limb leads and six chest leads, make, giving you a total of 10 lead placement. But you're going to get 12 electrical signals. Remember, we said that. So when V1, 
um, this is the chess leads. The position of V1 is the, the, the right of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space. So we did anatomy and we discussed intercostal space. So you know how to locate the intercostal space. So V1 is to the right of the sternum in the fourth intercostal space. V2 is left of the sternum, the fourth intercostal space. Then you put on V4, you don't put V3 on yet. V4 is in the fifth intercostal space, the mid clavicular line. So where you, you locate your clavicle and in the mid position of the clavicle, you're gonna come straight down. You're gonna make a vertical line and where that intersect the fifth intercostal space, you put V4. V3 is going to be placed between V2 and V4. Again, V4, you get your mid clavicular line. So this is the mid point of the clavicle. You're going to come down vertically and where, where that intersect the fifth intercostal space, then that's V4. V3 is placed between V2 and V4. Now V5, anterior axillary line and the fifth intercostal space. So the, just, so the axilla, the axilla is what uh, is commonly uh, referred to as the armpit. So that's the axilla, the armpit is the axilla. So anterior axillary line is this anterior to, to the armpit. And you're going to come straight down and where that intersect the fifth intercostal space, that's V5. V6 is the mid axillary line and the fifth intercostal space. So you're going to come the mid position of the axilla, you're going to come down where that intersect the fifth intercostal space, then V6. So four limb leads and six chest leads. So these are uh, so the limb leads okay so you can put the, the leads on the arm so the right arm the left arm and then the legs you can put it on the leg itself the right leg and the left leg but you can also modify it so especially if someone have amputation or some other problems going on the right arm can be placed at the, the right shoulder the left arm uh, left shoulder and you can do the groin or the lower abdominal area for the uh, the, limb, the 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 leg lead, so the right leg and the left leg. So these are some of the positions. The chest leads now. So again, this is your sternum. Okay, the right of the sternum, left of the sternum. V1 is in the fourth intercostal space left, sorry, right of the sternum. So that's V1. So the first intercostal space, that is the space between the first rib and the second rib. So this is one, two, three, fourth. Fourth intercostal space, the right of the sternum, V1. Then V2, one, two, three, four. The fourth intercostal space, left of the sternum. Then you put V4, you get your clavicle, mid clavicular line. So the midway, bit, the midway in the clavicle, you come vertically downward. Where that intersect the fifth intercostal space, then you put V4. Midway between V2 and V4, you put V3. So the axilla is the armpit. So the armpit would be right. So the, the armpit would be, say, right underneath there. The anterior portion of the arm, armpit would be right there. So this is the anterior axillary line. Just, just the, the, the front of the armpit. You draw a, a straight line down, and that's called the anterior axillary line. Where that intersects, uh, the, the fifth intercostal space, that's V5. Then the mid axillary line, that is the, the mid position of the axilla, mid position of the, the armpit. You come straight down where that intersects the fifth intercostal space, V6. So you have to know 
where to um, position the leads. If you position the leads incorrectly, you're going to give the patient disease that they don't have. You're going to get in, incorrect um, uh, results. Now, when the heart when the heart muscle is stimulated by by the the the, the electrical uh, system in the heart, um, the you you have what we call uh, action potential. So for the for the muscle to contract, it has to get a signal from the electrical system in the heart, and these electrical signals uh, occur because of the movement of ions between the inside and the outside of the cell. Okay, so the, the ions that we're talking about is your sodium, your potassium, and your calcium. Those are the more common ions that, that move in and out of the cells. So when you have a, 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 the electrical system activates or send a signal to the muscle, Usually what happens, sodium rushes into the, into, the, into the cell, the inside of the cell, and you get what we call depolarization. The muscle now gets a signal and it contracts. After the muscle contracts, then iron going to move in the opposite direction, and you get what we call repolarization, which is the restoration of uh, the electrical potential of the, 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 the myocardial cells, the muscle cells. So, you know, we're not going to go too much in depth about um, the action potential, but it is the movement of iron between the inside and the outside of the cell which um, will give rise to the, the action potential. It looks somewhat like this, okay? Um, so it looks somewhat like that. So when, when, when the sodium rushes inside the cell, you get what we call depolarization, the, the uh, voltage increase, okay? And then what happened to get the plateau phase, uh, your calcium moves out, and then to get the repolarization phase, uh, potassium moves out of the cell and bring it back to the resting potential. So you know, that's the action potential in a nutshell. Depolarization, uh, we have right here, which is the, the sodium rushes inside the cell, okay? And then the um, cell membrane becomes more positive, and then you get a, you have a plateau phase, and then the repolarization when uh, potassium rushes out of the cell. So we're not gonna go into much depth there are two action potential, however. There is one uh, in the muscle because the, the muscle contracts. And as I get, I, again, the muscle have to get certain signal to do this. And it get the signal from the electrical uh, system. The electrical system also have an action potential. You know, once you're conceived, uh, the, 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 the heart uh, starts to beat without any external influence. And that is because the electrical property of the heart is such that it's spontaneously depolarized. And that is why you don't need anything for the heart to, 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 to function, because the electrical property automatically uh, functions. And it automatically functions because it has what we call spontaneous depolarization. Okay. The the electrical system, that's what we call the, 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 the specialized conduction system of the heart. So the electrical system of the heart is a specialized conduction system. And then the non-specialized conduction system is the heart muscle. So you have uh two action potential going on. You have the muscle and the electrical system. The electrical system needs no external influence because, you know, we, we, we are alive and we function because the heart spontaneously functions. 
and it's spontaneous in function because we have what we call spontaneous depolarization. Um, so, you know, so the, the specialized conduction system of the heart or what I like to call the electrical property or the electrical wiring of the heart. The electrical wiring of the heart, which, which just automatically functions, you have a spontaneous slow depolarization. And then you have firing, you have depolarization, and then the electrical system just works. So, you know, we did anatomy of the heart. You have the atrium and the ventricle. When you have an electrical stimulation, and we're going to look at the conduction system in detail, again, the conduction system is like Oh, the, the, the wiring, say the wiring of the house. When you wire a house, you're going to have electric wires, you're going to have generators, because you have to have a power supply. Okay, so you have to have a power supply and wires. Similarly, the heart has a power, multiple power supplies and it has wires. These wires we call specialized conduction uh, system. But when the electrical uh, uh, system stimulates the atrium, you're going to get what we call depolarization of the atrium. And when, when you get depolarization of the atrium, on the, on the surface ECG, you're going to see P waves. So when the electrical system stimulates the atrium, the atrium is going to contract. So when we say depolarization, it is sort of synonymous with contraction because you get depolarization before you get contraction. The electrical, the electrical, uh, uh, the, the, what happens electrically is depolarization. And then what happens mechanically is contraction. So you get atrial depolarization and then the atrium contracts. But on the surface ECG, you're going to see P waves. In the ventricle now, when you get ventricular depolarization, the electrical, uh, you have stimulation of the, the ventricle via, via electrical uh, stimulation. You're going to get ventricular depolarization. So the electrical thing is electric, ventricular depolarization, then the ventricle contracts. And then on the surface ECG, you're going to get what we call QRS complex, QRS complex. So ventricular depolarization, which is the electrical uh, phenomenon, then you get ventricular contraction. It's you, on the surface ECG, you're going to see QRS complex. Then after ventricular depolarization, you get ventricular repolarization because when you stimulate the ventricle, and it contracts. You have to give it some time to relaxes. And ventricular repolarization allows the ventricle to relax. And on the surface ECG, you're going to see it as T waves. Okay, so you'll see it as T waves. Again, we're going to look at the conduction system in detail. And it's just, again, it's just like the electrical wiring of the house. You have a generator and you're, you're going to run, the current is going to flow from that generator to all over the house. So the generator of the heart is actually in the upper portion of the right atrium. As a matter of fact, it is at the junction of the superior vena cava with the right atrium. That is where the electrical power of the heart is. And that's called the sinus node. The sinoatrial node or the sinus node. That is the, the electrical generator of the heart between the superior vena cava and the right atrium. So when that electrical impulse is generated, it's gonna travel through the atrium via specialized wiring. 
specialized wiring. So th this is actually uh, tissue which function as specialized uh, uh, conduction uh, system uh, properties. So the electric current is generated in the generator, which is the sinus, sinus node. It's going to travel through the atrium and it's going to go to the ventricle. It's going to take a, it's going to take a certain amount of time to do that. And that is why we have what you call the PR interval. It is the time it's going to take the electrical current to flow from the generator, the sinoatrial node, to the ventricle. And it actually goes to what we call the AV node. So the AV node is at the junction of the atrium and the ventricle. But it's going to take a certain amount of time. And that's, that time is called the PR interval. OK? So it's the interval between the beginning of the P wave. So the, the beginning of the P wave is where you have the electrical power uh, system, sinus node. So it's the interval time, that is, interval between the beginning of the P wave and the beginning of the QRS complex. OK? So again, the, the, the current is going to take a certain amount of time to flow from the generator in the top of the atrium to the AV node, to, to, to the junction between the atrium and the ventricle. And that is called the AV node. That There's another power supply right at that junction between the atrium and the ventricle. It's called the AV node. It's another power supply. Then you get what we call the QT interval. So all these waves and intervals are very, very important because it, it, it gives you a lot of information about the heart. So you have your QT interval, which is the interval between the beginning of the QRS complex and the end of the T wave. So remember, your, your, your QRS complex is when you have ventricular depolarization and then the ventricle contracts. Then the QT interval, it is the time from the ventricular depolarization to the end of repolarization. And that we get a lot of information by knowing that interval, OK? So this is what your surface ECG looks like. This is what your surface ECG looks like. The first thing you get is your P wave because the electrical power is in the top of the atrium. When that electrical power sends out a current, it's gonna depolarize the atrium. So you get an atrial contraction and that's depicted as a P wave. Okay, P wave, atrial depolarization, P wave. The atrium contracts after that. Then the PR interval, it is the time it's going to take the electrical impulse to travel from the electric power source, which is at the junction of the superior vena cava and the atrium, to travel to the, the ventricle. It's going to slow up. There's a, a not, there's a subsidiary power station between the atrium and the ventricle, and we call that the AV node. So it's going to slow a little bit there. It's going to slow a little bit there. And then you'll have what we call ventricular depolarization. OK? The ventricle is going to depolarize. And you get the so-called QRS complex. You get ventricular depolarization and the ventricle contracts ventricular depolarization and the ventricle contracts. QRS complex because you have a Q, Q a Q wave is the first downward de deflection. So you see this goes down, this is your Q wave. R is the first upward deflection, so it's an R. And then the S is the second downward deflection. So you get a QRS complex. So this is what it looks like on the surface ECG. QRS complex suggests ventricular depolarization. 
and then ventricular contraction. Your QT interval is from the beginning of the Q wave to the end of the T wave. So it encompasses ventricular depolarization and ventricular repolarization. Remember, your ventricular repolarization is the T wave, okay? After the ventricle is depolarized and it contracts, electrical stuff have to go on to make it come back to, 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 to its normal state, okay? And that's why you get repolarization. So you have to know the interval, your PR interval. You have to know your QT interval. Um, this is your what you call your ST segment. The ST segment is from the end of the S wave to the beginning of the T wave. These are very important intervals and segments, okay, and waves. You have to know these things. ST segment from the end of the S wave to the beginning of the T wave. And then your QRS duration, that's the, the width of the QRS complex. That's also very important. That's from the beginning of the Q wave to the end of the S wave is your QRS duration, the time it takes to complete this, uh, this, this, this wave. And then also PR segment from the end of the P wave to the beginning of the Q wave, PR segment. So the important thing is your P wave, atrial depolarization, atrial contraction, PR interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS. That is the time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the SA node, sinus atrial node, to the AV node, which is at the junction of the atrium and ventricle. Ventricular depolarization give you your QRS complex. You get ventricular depolarization, then the ventricle contracts. And then ventricular repolarization is from your T wave. Okay. All right. So those are very important waves and intervals. And then we talk about the PR segment and SD segment. All right. So this is what a normal 12 EDCG looks, looks like. And so again, you put on 10 electrodes but you get 12 lead, you get 12 electrical signals. You get what we call lead one, okay? So you get lead one, you get lead two, uh, lead three, AVR, AVL, AVF. So you, you, you get an actual of uh, six limb leads, okay? So you get lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, AVF. So these ones with A is what we call augmented limb leads. Okay, so when you look at your 12 lead ECG, where you see A, it means augmented. So these are augmented limb leads. Again, you put 10 electrodes on and you get 12 electrical signals. So you have a lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. These are limb leads, limb leads, okay? Then these are your chest leads, okay? This is V1, this is V2, V3, V4, V5, and V6, your chest leads, okay? So you have six chest leads and six limb leads. Hence, we have our 12 lead ECG. So again, it's 10 electrodes you put on the patient, but you get 12 lead, 12 electrical signals. All right, so just look at the bottom. This is what we call a rhythm strip. So when you have just one lead uninterrupted, and it's continuous. This is what we call a rhythm strip. We're just looking at the rhythm now. 
But if you look, you see your P wave. P wave because you have atrial depolarization and then atrial contraction. P wave. Then your PR interval from the beginning of the P wave to the beginning of the QRS. PR interval. This is time it takes for the electrical impulse to travel from the, the, the sinus node in the top of the atrium to the junction between the atrium and the ventricle, we call that the AV node. So the first thing you sh you're going to get is your P wave. Then once the impulse gets to the ventricle, you're going to get your QRS. This is your QRS complex. QRS complex. Because once the impulse gets into the ventricle, it's going to depolarize the ventricle. Okay, that's the electrical, it's the electrical signal that's traveled. Just like in your house, the electrical current travels. So when the electrical impulse gets to the ventricle, it's de it's going to depolarize the ventricle. The, you get depolarization of the ventricle, then the ventricle contracts. So the electrical stuff have to occur before you get the mechanical stuff. So your QRS complex. So P wave, atrial depolarization, QRS, ventricular depolarization. Then the ventricle contracts, then the ventricle is going to repolarize. Repolarize is when everything sort of gets back to normal so that it, it can undergo another set of uh, electrical stimulation. So when you look at a surface 12 dCG, a normal 12 dCG should have P wave followed by a QRS complex followed by T wave. And then you start the process again, P wave, QRS, T wave. P wave, QRS, T wave. A, a normal 12 dCG should have this pattern because the electrical impulse comes from the atrial, from the sinoatrial node or the, 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 the sinus node at the top of the right atrium. It's going to travel through the atrium first. It's going to come to the junction between the atrium and the ventricle. We have what we call the AV node right there. Then it's going to travel down into the ventricle. That is the normal pathway for the electrical impulse in the heart. So a normal surface ECG should have P wave followed by QRS followed by T wave. P wave, QRS, T wave. P, Q, R, S, T wave. So this is the normal pattern, okay? If you don't see any of these, then something is, up, something is not right. All right. The, one of the main reasons why we do ECG before we go into the depth of echo is because you have to know the concept, the concept of gating. When we say echo is gated, what do we mean by that? Echo is gated because when we do anything in the heart, it's either in systole or diastole. When we do anything in the heart, it is either a systolic phenomenon or a diastolic phenomenon. If you look at your ECG, remember we're talking about atrial contraction, P wave, your QRS ventricular contraction or depolarization. We can use those terms synonymously or interchangeable. Um, and then you have your ventricular repolarization uh, uh, depicted uh, as your T wave. Systole, or the heart contracts, so again, remember, P wave is due to atrial contraction, QRS, ventricular contraction. So when we talk about systole, it's usually from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the T wave, that's systole. And then diastole, 
is from the end of the T wave to the beginning of the QRS. Okay, remember systole is when the heart contracts. Diastole is when the heart relaxes. Okay, systole is when the heart contracts. Diastole is when the heart relaxes. You can look at the surface ECG and systole is from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the T wave. Because remember, when we say ventricular depolarization, the QRS depicts ventricular depolarization. It is the electrical phenomenon that occurs before the heart contracts. And then when the heart, uh, the electrical property that occur, or electrical phenomenon that occur before the heart relaxes is you get your, you get your T wave, okay? So systole is from the beginning of the QRS to the end of the T wave. Diastole is from the end of the T wave to the, uh, to the, to the beginning of your QRS complex. That is, when we say gating, that is what uh, we talk about. That is what we, we mean, okay? Gating is, 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 is basically the cardiac cycle, okay? You know, the heart fills with blood in diastole, and then when it contracts, it's gonna pump blood out, okay? That is, that is, uh, you know, the, the, the phenomenon of gating, okay? Ultrasound and Doppler of the heart is usually a systolic or a diastolic uh, phenomenon. Okay, so when we do ultrasound of the heart, it's either a systolic phenomenon or a diastolic phenomenon. And it's important. You need to know if something is occurring in systole or diastole. So you should not be doing your echo unless you have your ECG leads hook up and you can gate it. All right, it's not because we like to have a, a, a EKG running at the bottom or the top. It has clinical significance. All right, so how do we use the electrocardiogram to determine heart rate? Okay, so we, all, we, we can use the EKG, ECG to determine the heart rate because remember, if the heart rate is too high, then it suggests a problem. If the heart rate is too low, it also suggests, you know, there could be some other problem. Um, all right, so remember your 12 lead ECGs. This is your 12 lead ECG. You have six limb leads and six chest leads. The limb leads lead one, lead two, lead three, AVR, AVL, and AVF. If you look closely on the EKG, there are some grids. There are grids, and the grids are there for a certain purpose. Each, you can see that these are there are some big grids. So you can see that there's a brighter or you know um, thicken lines going. Okay, so we we, we call these uh, big blocks. So from one bright line to the next bright line to the next bright line, you can see these are what we call big, big, big blocks. Now inside each big blocks, there are smaller blocks. So there are actually five small blocks per big block. Just look at the grid. So you have one, two, three, four, five. So there are multiple big blocks where you have the, the thickened, bright lines, and then inside each big block, there are smaller blocks. The, the time duration of each big block is um, 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds, okay? The time duration between the big blocks is 200 milliseconds or 0.2 seconds. The time duration of the smaller blocks is 40 milliseconds 
or 0 0.04 uh, milliseconds. Um, so when you're doing heart rate, the normal heart rate is between 60 and 100. The normal heart rate is between 60 and 100. If the heart rate is below 60, we said, we said the patient has a bradycardia. Brady means slow. If the heart rate is below 60 beats per minute, and when we talk about heart rate, it's the number of beats per minute. If the heart rate is less than 60 beats per minute, we say the patient have a bradycardia. If the heart rate is greater than 100 beats per minute, we say the patient have a tachycardia. Tachy means fast. So to determine the heart rate, what you need to do is to remember the number 300. 300. And then what you're going to do, you're going to divide 300 by the number of big blocks between your QRS complex. So you're going to divide 300 by a number. And that number is the number of big blocks between your QRS complex. And this is what we talk about. So if you look at the rhythm strip at the bottom, these big spikes are your QRS, are the R wave. The big spikes are your QRS or R wave. It's the R wave. So you want to find the number of big blocks between each spacing of your QRS or the R wave. And what you can do is find one of the R wave that lies on a big block. So this one lies close or equal. Let's use this one. So this one lie, lies on the big block. And then the next R wave occurs one, two, three, close to four. So the spacing between each R wave is about four big blocks. The spacing between your R wave, so the R wave is the big spikes, is about, you can count it, you know, one, two, three, four. So it's roughly about four. And when you're given the heart rate, it doesn't have to be exact. It has to be close. So again, so you're going to divide 300 by four and that gives you the heart rate 300 divided by four is 75 so the heart rate for this patient is 75 beats per minute so the heart rate is the 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 the, the, the number of beats per minute the normal heart rate is between 60 and 100 if the heart rate is below 60 we say it's bradycardia. If it's above 100, we say it's tachycardia. So again, the number to remember is 300. And to get the heart rate, you're going to divide 300 by the number of big blocks that separate your R to R interval. If you have one big block separating your R to R, then the heart rate is 300 divided by 1. So it will be 300 beats per minute. If you have two big blocks separating your R to R interval, the heart rate is 300 divided by two. It's 150 beats per minute. Similarly, if the R to R interval, if you have three big blocks, then the heart rate is 300 divided by three, and it's 100 beats per minute. Again, R to R interval, if you have four big blocks separating the R to R interval, heart rate is 300 divided by 4, 75. If there are five big blocks separating your R to R interval, then it's 300 divided by 5, the heart rate is 600 beats, sorry, 60 beats per minute. And then if there are six big blocks separating your R to R interval, the heart rate is 300 divided by uh, six, that's 50 beats per minute, okay? Again, as we said, one big, so these are, you can see the grid in a little bit better here. Each of these bright line represents, so from there to there is one big block, from there to there is another big block, 
Again, the duration of the big block is 0.2 seconds or 200 milliseconds. A millisecond uh, is a thousand times uh, one, one thousandth of a second. So to get this to milliseconds, you multiply it by a thousand, so 200 milliseconds. And a small block is 0.04 seconds or 40 milliseconds. Okay. Again, the heart rate is 300 divided by the number of big blocks between your R to R interval. Okay. Um, we're going to stop here. Uh, the next session, we'll look at the conduction system.